Gonna start working on the seats today. Got the parts laid out. I went ahead and primed and painted the lower end of the seats. Uh, there's a little bit of the seat tubes that are seen um, outside of the upholstery. So I wanted to black those out. I just used some two-part, well, I used a two-part epoxy uh, primer, and then I used a two-part urethane satin black automotive finish for for those. So I, and I did the same thing here. I got these primed up. Um, and then I also painted the cross tubes that go there. So looking at the manual, it says what I need to do is trim off uh, 200 thousandths from the center of the bottom hole. So I'll come in here and mark 200 thousandths. I'll put some tape on it, I'll probably cut that on my bandsaw. And then I need to use a rod or something to, with this laying flat, mark the top centers of the tubes and then come in eight and a quarter inches and drill a number 11 hole. You got a pretty nice trick here you can do for marking the tops of the tubes uh, just by sliding an aluminum tube over it so it marks a perfect center line on both sides. I've got, uh, I've got an aluminum rod here that I think will work pretty well. Or maybe I'll try, you know what? I think I'll try some of this aluminum angle that I have on the edge there and I'll run it like that, see if that works. So I'll come eight and a quarter inches up from the bottom here, and I'll make a center punch, and I'll drill with a number 11. Eight and a quarter is right here. Right there. are only on the bottoms, only on the bottom of the seat bottoms. All right, here's the setup I'm gonna do. I'm probably doing a little overkill on this. It really probably is not critical. I could just hand drill that, but I got the tools here to do this, so why not? So what I've done is I've got my uh, drill press jig, my V-block here to hold the tube in place. I've clamped an angle plate here for a stop so that I can get them all at the same dimension, which is eight and a quarter. And then over here, I've got this block here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. That'll go in there. That just holds it up so that it's parallel to the uh, T-slot plate on the drill press. So I'll drill that one. And then I've got another one of those right there. After I drill that one, I'll take this out, run this behind the drill over there, if that makes any sense. So. I'll get this ready to go here and let's drill some holes. And I'm only drilling through one side of the tube. I'm just pilot holing it right now. I'm gonna open it up to a number 11. I'm realizing I really only needed to mark one with this setup, because the rest of them just end up this way, but this was an afterthought after I already, when I came over here to the drill press, but I am liking it.
got something here that isn't quite clear on the manual, but I think I've got it figured out. They tell you here to countersink the outboard seat side plates of each seat assembly for the flush head bolts. So, okay, well, I found the flush head bolts. I went to this drawing here and I see we have a number 29 and two number threes for each side. Well, the number threes are these 3 16 counter bolts, 100 degree, I'm sorry, countersunk bolts or screws, 100 degree. And the number 29 is a larger quarter inch. That's what kind of hung me up. This is a quarter inch countersink, 100 degree. And it goes in this whole, um, flip this around the right way. It goes in this hole here. Well, that hole is not drilled for a quarter inch bolt. That's drilled for a 3 16 And they don't tell you that you need to open that hole up to quarter inch anywhere that I could see. I mean, I looked through here and I didn't see any reference to that. So uh, I just wanted to really think about this because once I drill this hole to quarter inch, you know, that's it. But as I study the, the drawing more closely, I see I can clearly see this is a, a larger screw compared to these if you look at the, the size of the nut on the drawing here. So I will go ahead and, and I'll open these up to quarter inch. And then I will countersink all of the holes uh, only on the outboard. So only two per, per seat. So this one and this one. So I need to make sure I make lefts and rights. Uh, and I'll only countersink the outboards there. And for that, I will use my 100 degree countersink. Make sure you got the right countersink the degrees. They make 82s, 90s, 60s, 100s, 120s. Um, I did find a 100. So let me get these opened up to quarter first, and then I'll countersink. countersink now. I've got my 100 degree in the drill press. I've got my drill press stop set uh, at the right depth for the 3 16 bolts. And I just found that depth by just kind of manually creeping in on one of these and, and finding out where it needs to be. And that gives me a perfect countersink for those. So that's for the 3 16. So that's going to be this one and this one. I'll do that to the to this one and then the other three, and then I'll do I'll set the depth for the quarter inch ones. It's critical that you do your lefts and rights, and I have marked little tick marks on the sides I'm going to drill. So this is going to be the mating piece to this one. So this one's a right. This is going to be a left. countersink depth set for the quarter inch bolt. I'm really at the limit of this countersink bit here um, for the diameter. And I'm, in fact, I'm, I'm not quite perfectly countersunk. I'm about 20,000 shy. I don't think that'll be an issue. I don't have a larger 100 degree right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and proceed with that. All right, I got all these done. Got lefts and rights here. Um, I kind of wish, I kind of wish I had known that I had to do this machining to these before I sent them out for anodize. <laughs> but I, I just, I don't know. I didn't read the whole manual before I did some of those things, so it's no big deal. I just would have preferred that I had an anodized finished all the way through. 
But those are complete. I got these all drilled out for the quarter inch here. So I'll have to look at the manual here and see what's gonna be next. Number four here, uh, modify eight multi-hole tangs per figure 09D08, and then rivet the multi-hole tangs to inside and outside of each seat bottom frame. So I found the tangs, I found the figure 09D08, and it looks like I take on the far end and I drill this out to a quarter inch. So I've marked this one. I'll bring it over to the drill press and get these all drilled out. Next up, I'm gonna rivet these multi-hole tangs to the seat bottom tubes. I get the uh, CCPQ62 rivets, the one on either side, so it'll end up looking like so. need to open up these holes here to number 11. They're already in there, they just need opening up. It's odd to me that they had me cut off the end of this tube and I'm gonna open that up to number 11. That edge clearance is gonna be almost next to nothing. But I suppose the load on it is this way rather than that way, so it's probably, I guess not all that big of a deal, but Let's get this drilled out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the seat bottoms and I'm gonna work on this section here. There's a stack up of washers, spacers, bearings and whatnot. So I'll get all that going because uh, they, they call for go ahead and bolt the seat bottom frame to the side plates. So I'll start fiddling with that. All right, got the got one of the seats here roughly assembled, and uh, just had to really look at the manual here and kind of figure out what they got going on. They're using some thin and some thick washers between tubes and plates and whatnot, so you'll want to study that before you get going on that. But we got it figured out, and I got these tubes in, and um, I guess I need to do the seat bottom sheet metal here. Um, I can do that now. I don't know if I was supposed to do that before or not. I didn't see anything in there. So, um, ah, yeah, complete the siding, sliding seat bottom frame by placing the seat bottom pan on top of it. Transfer drill mark. Okay, yeah, that makes sense because you wouldn't be able to stretch these apart to get these tubes in if that pan was in place. I have to countersink these holes on the these rail plates here. This is what the seat is gonna ride on, the bearing. Uh, these get countersunk 120 degrees for a flush rivet. So I'll just use, I'll just use this micro stop. I'll probably just throw it in the drill press and use the micro stop here for that.
got these countersunk here. And next I'm going to place them in position here. And then one goes here and then the same thing over there. And where these go is the very back edge of this rail should be in line with the front edge of this welded steel tube here. So basically it'll be like that. I don't think the tolerance here is critical if it was plus or minus, oh, you know, 16th inch or something. Hell, even a little more, I don't think it's gonna matter, but I'll get these marked up, drilled, and riveted in place. Here's the setup. Just got the rail plate clamped. That's the position. I'm gonna use my offset drill because it's, I, it's, it's not enough room to get a drill in there with the bit. So I'll use this, that'll bring the drill over away from this tube here. Got these drilled and cleat in place. And now I will put the rivets in. These get the uh, countersink rivets, three each. That was easy. Got all these riveted in place. I did have to use the manual puller back in the aft ones because there wasn't enough room to get my gun in with this here, but I was able to use the gun for the forward two. On the slider blocks, these are gonna go here where I had previously drilled these holes underneath. And they need to, I need to trim slightly the seat pan material here. So I'm just gonna hold the slider block roughly where it goes. I'm just gonna make a mark. That's where I'm gonna do some trimming. And then we'll do the same thing over here. And I'll do, according to the manual here, uh, it looks like just a little, a little cut up over and down so I'll just kind of mark a little bit like that and I'll trim that up. Got these trimmed, both sides. Now I can go ahead and transfer drill number 30 holes all through the sides in the front of this uh, lower seat pan here, get this cleat coat in place and riveted. Got everything drilled and cleat coat in place. I will go ahead and rivet. Gets the Avex rivets here all the way around. So I've come across something that's a little funky. I don't really understand how I'm supposed to do this. I've got the seat back slid over the frame and there's a sewn loop here. That loop is supposed to, this rod is supposed to go through that loop. The problem is in a previous step, they've had me rivet the seat pan on and I can no longer flex the seat frames apart from each other to get these in or out. So these are here now. And there's no way I can spread this apart now to get this rod out to fish it through the seat upholstery, the loop here, and get it back in place. So I'm gonna have to, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm thinking I'll take some of my, I might take my Nipex parallel jaw pliers and squeeze down and crimp this a little bit onto the nut on both ends, just to kind of hold it while I pull this screw out. I really only need to do it on one end, I guess pull the screw out, fish the tube in, and put that back in place and just kind of hold the nut in there. It's the only way I can think of how this is supposed to be done. I'm not really sure how they want you to do this because I went in order here, unless there's something I'm missing. Well, that wasn't easy. I was able to grab the tube with my Nipex pliers and grab the flats of the nut just enough to unscrew the bolt. And what I did is I just super glued I super glued the nut in there just to hold it in place where I can sit this back down. You 
know, fish it through the sewn loop and then get that nut in there with a washer somehow, it's not gonna be easy, um, and try to get this back together. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Well, that worked. Uh, I wasn't happy to do it like that, but it, it did work. Super gluing the nut in there uh, was fine. Okay, got the upholstery on. That was not an easy task. These are extremely tight on the tubes, as they should be, I guess, to get a nice tight upholstery look. But man, uh, with two of us here working it, we're out of breath. <laughs> that was tight. But it's in place. Um, looks pretty good. And I think, I think I'll be happy with that. Oh, we got the seats in, got the upholstery on the frames. That was a little tricky. There was, uh, on the one seat, I, I did it per the manual, but on the I realized on the second one, it had been a little easier to go out of order on a couple things, which did make it easier. But they go in, um, it's just, it's definitely, I, it's a two person job. I'd had a hard time doing this by myself. But once it stretches on, it's actually a nice fit. Really like this design with the bearings and the little plastic blocks up front. Really easy to adjust. Everything locks in place. Yeah. Nice.